infants and toddlers, excuse me, and uh, even what happens in the sanctuary downstairs, in my opinion, is not a small church. There's no big church over there and no small church here. As a matter of fact, I kind of think that what happens in this building is probably more important than what is happening downstairs. Because the people downstairs, your mom, your grandma, your aunts, your uncles, your sisters, your brothers, they've lived a lot of their life already. They've gone through things and some of us are still learning the word even when we come on Sunday. But you all in this room have an opportunity to walk out your life in the understanding and wisdom of God before you even get started. And that is a blessing, that is a blessing. So I commend you for being up here. Give yourselves a hand, big hand. Um, so thank you for being here and uh, certainly give me an opportunity to speak to you. Like I said, my message today is a Jesus flex. My job is to talk to you about the fact that Jesus is God, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and put that scripture reference up. I need two volunteers. Um, let, me, let me also say that, yes, you all know Pastor Rodney, and you know how crazy he is. Uh, we're married, but we're not the same, okay? I'm not going to be jumping and dancing. and That's likely not to happen. It might happen, but it might not happen. Come here. Come on. You can, right here in the front. Somebody on this side, volunteer? Come on, bro. Okay, I want you guys to like stand like right here. Come on, what's your name? Darion? Okay, Darion, come stand about right here. What's your name? Raymond, come stand about right here. Put these glasses on. <clears throat> now look straight ahead. And Darion, can you read that scripture for me? My sheep. Hear my voice. Wait, wait, wait. So you're moving your head. Just stay straight. Uh, my sheep hear my voice, and I know, and I know them, and they will, and they follow. Oh, yeah, I can't. Yeah. You can't get the rest? You're almost there. Okay, what about you? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Uh, I'm not looking under the glasses. Okay, keep going. No, keep I can going. see a little bit over here. Keep I can going, see, I can see a little bit over here. Oh, uh, okay. And I know them, and they follow me. <laughs> I'm not cheating. How am I cheating? How am I cheating? Okay, so is there, is there another scripture? Go ahead and put the next one. Okay, what about that one? Okay, I cannot see that. You can't? No. <laughs> you gonna try? All I can see is the and. The and? Yeah, the and. <laughs> All right, all right. So you were at closest. So Pastor Rodney gonna give you some money next week, okay? <laughs> Whoa! I can read this one. You can read that one. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And I give them eternal life uh, to them, and they will. Ooh. Oh yeah, nah. Uh, <laughs> okay. So Pastor Rodney got you next week, okay? So the point of these. Over here. <laughs> right here in the front. <clears throat> so the point of these glasses is that oftentimes we have um, the inability to see God or see his and understand his word because of the lens that we look in. Okay. So this lens is distorted. This one has like holograms and shapes in it. And this got little circles or what have you. And uh, it makes it difficult to understand who God is because of what we're looking through, right? And so the point today is to talk about who God is and who Jesus is through scripture, right? So John 10, 27 and 30 says, my sheep listen to my voice and I know them and, and they follow me and I will give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And then if we skip down to verse 38, 
it says, but if you, but if I do them, even though you do not believe in me, believe the works so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I'm in the Father. Let's pray real quick. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together to learn more about Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for these young people in this room. Lord God, I thank you, Father, for the hearts that they have to know you in Jesus' name. All right. So we've been, uh, Calvary and our church has been a few, for a few seasons now talking about Jesus. Anyone know the themes that we've been going on with Jesus? Anybody? Leading like Jesus. Okay. Anybody else? Drawing the circle, yep. Drawing the circle had to do with uh, living in relationship with Jesus, right? We've been restoring like Jesus, we've been recovering like Jesus, and we've been releasing like Jesus. And the point of all of this is for you to understand who Jesus is, right? So Jesus is the part of the Trinity. Anyone know what the Trinity is? Anybody? Go ahead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, right? So the Trinity, if you ask the average person, they do understand that there are three people in the Trinity. But what happens in a lot of false religions uh, is that they don't understand how those people relate, right? So you'll hear people talk about Jesus, and they'll say, well, Jesus was created, They'll talk about Jesus was a God. Jesus was a prophet. He was a wonderful teacher, but he was not God. What makes us different in Christianity and as believers is that we believe that Jesus is God. He existed the whole time. He did not become created, and he's not separate from God. Okay, so in Hebrews 1, it says that Jesus is the exact imprint of God. Anyone know Creole? I was going to say Haitian, but that's not a language. <laughs> Anybody know Creole? If I say sac passe, do you know what that would? Huh? If I say sac passe, what's the response? Not boule. <laughs> what's that? What does ma, not boule mean? You don't know? <laughs> so usually when you say sac passe and you say not boule, that means, hey, I'm chilling. But the actual translation of that is I'm burning. The actual translation of, of uh, not boule is I'm burning. So what that gets the point to is that... Um, even though the original language means um, burning, it's interpreted and understood, right, as I'm chilling or, you know, it's hot in Haiti. So to say you burning just mean you just chilling in the heat, basically, right? So when, when it says in Hebrews 1, uh, right down there in verse 3, it says, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. That imprint actually means the nature of God, right? So the Trinity is defined as God is one eternal being who exists in three eternal distinct persons. Can y'all repeat that after me? The Trinity is God is one eternal being who exists in three eternal distinct persons. So again, this is what separates your faith from other faith from the Jehovah Witnesses, from the Hebrew Israelites, from the Muslims, the Mormons, everyone. This statement is what separates you from any other religion that's out there. So the being is the what, right? The persons are the persons or the personhood of Jesus Christ. So, or the Trinity, the three people, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 
There are people that use analogies to describe the Trinity. Sometimes you get an apple. How would an apple be used to describe the Trinity? Anybody know? The seed, the core, right? The core, the flesh, what's that? Yep, the outside, and then there's the flesh of the apple. That's been used to describe the Trinity. Then you got, uh uh-oh, you got an egg that's also been used to describe the Trinity. How would the egg be used? Yep, the three parts, the yolk, the egg white, and the shell. And the last part that some of you may have heard is this idea that the Trinity is like water. Anybody heard that one before? Yeah? You hear the water, you get the ice, and then you get steam, right? That they're all the same part, they just exist in three persons or three ways. All of those are wrong. I meant to say it with that much force. (laughs) All of those are wrong. Anybody know why it's wrong? Any idea? So what's the key there? Uh, Yep. So as an egg or an apple, that's what's called partialism. That means that God is uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit are a part of God. How's that different than what we said? Anybody? There's There's one God. All three of them are part of the being. They're not, I'm sorry, all three of them are God. All three persons of the Trinity are God. They're not part of God. And then the idea of uh, water, ice, and steam is what's called modalism or oneness. Okay? That basically says that God sometimes becomes God the Father. And then when necessary, when Jesus came into the earth and we just finished Christmas and we sang about Jesus is the reason for the season, that he became ice. And then when he uh, transfigured and went back up to heaven, that now he's steam in that he's the Holy Spirit. That's modalism. That is not the definition of what you believe, that you will not believe, okay? That the fact of the matter is, is that God has always been. This ice, if you want to say it's Jesus, it always existed. It didn't need water to exist. It all, he always existed. So let's say it again. Let's go back to that Trinity statement. God is one eternal being who coexists in three distinct persons. So in saying that, then Jesus is God. Okay, we understand that? Let's go to that um, Trinity uh, picture. So the so Trinity, triune. So here's what we just described. God the Father is God. Can y'all see that? Am I in your way? Okay. God the Father is God. God the Son is God. God the Holy Spirit is God. God the Father is not God the Son, right? He's not a part of God the Father, God the Son. God the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and God the Father is not the Holy Spirit as well. So you have to understand what you are uh, believing as far as the Trinity. So you want to know what God looks like. Well, guess what? He gave us Jesus. So the, the idea that God exists in the heavens and he's somehow up there and we can't understand him and no one can fathom him, guess what? He gave you Jesus. You can understand God because Jesus is God and he's the picture of who God is, okay? So why does this matter? And I call that the Jesus flex. Why does this matter? Well, the first reason that it matters, so so I'm gonna tell y'all a story. So I was in the sixth grade and I had just moved into these new apartments. So my mom and I, and so we were going, I had to go to a new school. 
So in this new, when I first moved into the apartment, it was summertime before school started, so I was just kind of venture outside and meet all the kids in the neighborhood. And I became cool with uh, this brother and sister. Her name, her name was Kiasi, and the, her brother was Kenya. And then this other friend of ours was Rod. It was Rod or Rick, not that Rod. <laughs> His name was Roderick. So I had three friends that I kind of played with in the summer before school started. So then we went to school. And then once we got to school, inevitably, the new girl encounters a bully. Her name was Adrienne Christopher. I remember every part of her. <laughs> Her name was Adrian Christopher, and Adrian Christopher just, I don't, I don't know why, didn't do anything. It was a skinny little sixth grader. No idea why she picked on me, but she did. She just always had something to say, always coming after me. So one day, so she noticed that I would walk home, we lived a distance from school, and I would walk home with Rod, Kenya, and Kiasi, right? So somehow, this one day, she decided to tell them that I said something about them. I know. So, so lunchroom, lunchtime came around, and I just hear all this stuff, like, yep, she's been talking trash about uh, Rod and Kiasi and Kenya. She's been talking trash. And I'm like, wait, what did I do? What did I do? So I was intent, but by the time I school was over, I was just going to go home. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm booking it. I'm walking fast. I'm not, hey, I'm not in this. So by the time school was over, they were like waiting for me. Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't do anything. I, I don't know what you was. So I'm just kind of walking around them. And I, I start walking. I get ahead. And I look back. And it's just almost this gang of people, this mob. Because it's not only them. It's everybody that want to come see a fight. Right. So they're all following me and they're coming after me. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So I'm just trying to get home. I'm, I'm probably on the verge of tears because I'm just trying to get home. I ain't do nothing. I'm a new girl. I ain't do nothing. I, ain't, I don't know what they're talking about. So, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yes. Yes. So at some point. Right. I got to the place where we, we, we got this patch of grass. We are crossing this uh, yard or this kind of stretch on the sidewalk and this patch of grass. And so somebody just basically took their book bag and threw it in front of me. I'm like, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? So they threw their bag in front of me. And the next thing, and so I think I feel, I feel like somebody probably yanked my book bag off and threw that down, too. And they're just like, come on, come on. And so I'm turning around, and again, I'm scared. I don't know these people, don't know what's going on. No. And then Rod, Rod starts coming toward me. So Rod is the one that wants to fight me. And I'm looking at him like, so this dude, when we went to high school, he was like a wrestler, football player. So he was huge. And I'm like, why does he want to fight me? I didn't do nothing, right? So there was this whole thing where you put a thing, a piece of paper back in the day. We put a piece of paper on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, knock this off. Or you draw a little line. I bet you won't cross that line. Look, I'm not trying to touch your shoulder. I'm not trying to cross the line. Like... I just want to go home, right? So I stood there, and after a whole bunch of talking, it was almost like a big old circle around me. After a whole bunch of talking, I just see Rod come toward me, just kind of like charging toward me. I closed my eyes, and I just swung. I didn't know what I was hitting. I was just, uh. Somehow I connected. <laughs> Somehow, I connected to Rod. Now, <laughs> Roderick, Roderick. Somehow, I connected to Roderick. And he went just down, just like down, like, oh. And he stayed there. I, I didn't know what was going on because, again, my eyes were closed. Maybe they thought that was on purpose, but I closed my eyes because I was scared. I was just going to swing, and, and I look up. I finally, I didn't feel nothing, so I opened my eyes, and I'm like, oh, he down. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I grabbed my stuff real quick, 
while everybody was like, ooh, to him, I just grabbed my stuff real quick and I just left. I, I don't know if he was, I don't know if he was knocked out or not. He probably was embarrassed. I knocked, I knocked him out. Yes, I knocked him out. <laughs> so we go home and I probably stayed in the house all week and just went back and forth to school. But eventually on a Saturday, it was typical that we would just go outside and play. Y'all know what, know what that is? <laughs> We all gather, we had a pool in our, so we all gathered around the pool and just eventually went outside to play. So I wandered up there, but really I wanted to talk to Kiasi and Kenya, cause I'm like, listen, y'all, y'all didn't get my back? Like what happened? What happened? Y'all just, y'all can't rep for me? Like what did I do? And they were just like, nah, we ain't messing with Rod. Now again, I. Rod eventually came around. Me and him were cool. To this day, I remind him of that fight. <laughs> I saw him about 10 years ago. I went back to Memphis. I was like, look, did you remember when I hit you? Don't you come at me anymore. But the point is, is that somehow I can flex on Rod. Now, he could probably crush me right now. He could, oh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> But listen, we went all through high school and I flexed on Rod. I constantly told him like, look, you remember? Look, do you remember? And you know, did I tell him my eyes were closed on purpose? Nope. Did I tell him I was scared? Nope. But I will remind him of what happened that day when he tried to approach me. And so here's the Jesus flex in that. As Jacob said, Jesus, help me. You're right. The Jesus flex in that is that Jesus stands before God on your behalf because he is God. Because he is God. That he can stand. The Bible says that he stands before God on your behalf, interceding for you. And he's saying that, look, this is my child. This is my son. This is my daughter. The enemy cannot have him, cannot have her. So the Jesus flex, the fact that Jesus is God, is not some idea that Jesus is some sort of mascot. Okay? What, high, what school do you guys go to? What's your mascot? A, a panther? A lion? A jaguar? A Native American. You, you go to Indian River? <laughs> so listen, sometimes we treat Jesus like a mascot. Like in name only does he have power. In name only is he a panther. In name only does he have the strength of a brave. But that's not who Jesus is. He's more than a mascot. He's more than a fake fictional character that stands up. And see, if you can understand that, as Slater was going through the uh, communion, if you can understand who Jesus is, like I said, what is happening in this room will in some cases mean more than what's happening downstairs. I cannot promise you a life free from trouble. Actually, Jesus said that. He says, in this life, you will have trouble. Some of you in this room have gone through loss. You've gone through hurt feelings. You've dealt with, your family may have dealt with poverty, someone losing a job, someone dealing with illness and sickness. But Jesus said to you that if you would believe in me, that you would overcome all of that. You would overcome all of that. And that's the Jesus flex. The Jesus flex is that he loves you. So when we look at the Trinity, the Trinity is about community. It's about relationship. So if there were no people, the three persons, if there were no people to love, then there would be no need for love. God is not like love. 
No, we know what love feels like. We know how to give love, but the very, the Bible says that God is love. And the Trinity says, hey, I'm in communion. I'm showing love. And as Jesus, his son that has come to you, that he loves you. That love was not a love that you had to have first. I was trying to think this morning, who said I love you first? <laughs> I'm pointing at Rodney. I don't remember, but I know I wasn't trying to. I was not trying to say it first. I was not trying to say it first. But you have a Jesus that said it first. Yeah, I didn't think I did, but anyway. <laughs> but you have a Jesus that loves you, that loved you first. You didn't have to do anything for it. You don't have to earn it. But the Jesus flex is, is that he loves you. The second point is that you have a Jesus flex that looks for you. So... Again, other religions, you have to work for God. The Jesus flex is he worked for you. He walked on, he, he, he carried a cross to Calvary to die on your behalf. The Jesus flex is that you do not have to look for him. He looks for you. You just have to answer. And the last point that I want to make real quick is that the Jesus flex is that he has a life for you. He says, the Bible says in John 10, 10, that I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. Listen, young people, <clears throat> even as we enter into Black History Month, black and brown people have to deal with things in this country and even in this world that you don't deserve. Okay. Again, you're going to encounter things in your life that you didn't deserve for it to happen to you. Then you might do some stuff that you do deserve. And it's not that sin doesn't have consequences, but the penalty for sin has been paid already. You do not have to live separate from God. If you want the God kind of life, that's what it's saying. It's saying that Jesus came that you may have life and have it to the full. That full there is a God kind of life. Then you've got to understand the Jesus flex in your life. The Jesus flex against the enemy. The Jesus flex even in your own thoughts and feelings. But you've got to understand that Jesus as God, fully God, fully human, that he loves you, that he looks for you, and that he has a life for you. Amen? All right. Let's stand to your feet and let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for these young people in this room, Lord. Father, I thank you, God, that they would understand the life that you have for them. God, I thank you that they would understand the purpose for which you've called them, Lord, to be in relationship with you, to trust you, to honor you, God, to give their lives over to you. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that they don't see themselves as little Christians or, God, that their life, Father, doesn't have to be fully sold out to you, but that they would leave this room today understanding that the Jesus flex is what they need in their life. It's what their family needs. It's what their community needs. It's what this world needs. Father, I thank you that they would understand that. They would seek out your wisdom. They would seek out your word, God, and that they would clearly see all that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen.